So, clap again. Yeah, clap again. Um, Shall we have a round of applause? <laughs> 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 Welcome to another episode of No Results and Excuses, where we talk semi-qualified uh, CrossFit fitness and uh, nonsense. Rubbish. Rubbish. My name's Matthew Bauman, and as always, my co-hosts, Justin Swartz, Cody Dick. Hello. Yeah, we're here with all the excuses from the week. <laughs> no yeah. results. No results and Still absolutely no, results. no factually correct information. <laughs> yes. No, don't quote us. That's where the nonsense comes from. <laughs> no, don't quote us. And no. semi-qualified. So what are we going to so talk about? So if we're lucky, some of it's correct. Yes, um, yeah, hopefully. Today we've got a nice lineup, uh, weightlifting in South Africa, and a little bit of news. Yeah, so the thing I wanted to talk about today was the rule book. I think a couple of people have spoken about it. So the CrossFit, uh, CrossFit HQ have released their rule book for 2020, which is the new season starting now with the Open. So we've got a, a few little tidbits to talk about, just the highlights, things that have changed. So firstly, something that hasn't changed, um, which some people complained about, was that the Open is still a direct qualifier to the Games. So you finish top 20 worldwide in the Open, you go to the Games. Yeah. And uh, people were saying, look, you can do well in the Open, but not necessarily be a good competitor at, a, at an actual event. Um, so it's a bit strange, but they've decided to keep it. They want to reward people for being top 20. She's, I think to expect HQ to not have the Open as a direct qualifier to the Games would be like eradicating the past 10 years of CrossFit and the culture that was built around participating in the Open in the first place. Yes. You know, like there's a lot of history there. Um, it's a lot, it, it's like the way in which a lot of us came to find competitive CrossFit through the Open. You know, there's five weeks of, of, of testing your fitness. Um, and then to suggest that one, or that there would be a better way to, to like, how can I say, um, measure yourself up against other people in the world is perhaps maybe short-sighted um, I mean and then also furthermore why would you participate in the open then if there was no incentive yes to do in so and yeah so some of these sanctionals are using the open as qualifiers for their sanctionals which is still something but I take your point that what's the point of doing the open if there's no chance of qualifying Unless it's just for General Joe, like you say, like the rest of us, yes. just do it for fun. I, th I think I think last year there was a lot of um, frustration around the fact that the um, affiliate leaderboard got removed. So for the General Joe, that was maybe contributing to their their boxes um, performance or ranking. Yeah. Uh, they kind of felt like they were sort of misaligned and, and not attached to something bigger than themselves or bigger than yeah. their performance but as far as i know now, um the affiliate leaderboard is is definitely coming back in and yes. i think like you've alluded to that gives the the, the 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 general membership something to be proud of number one yeah. and also something to potentially contribute to i mean look yeah. at look, someone like yourself that who went to the games a couple of years back if there's a high volume pulling workout you could possibly outscore even some of the top guys in the box still today yeah. and help your box rank higher um so isn't that the general thing with the, the whole open is that their plan is to um it's it's actually more for the the general show yeah um participation participation and yeah. then when people say why do the open um everyone says well you can measure your scores against your friends in the gym and against yourself in the yes, box and all happy yeah happy happy yeah um and we repeat workouts because we want to see how we've done. Yeah, I think I think like on that note, it's actually it comes down to the the box owner and coaches to promote that culture. Because if you're doing CrossFit without measuring the data around your results, you're going in blind. Yeah. And if you're not measuring, you you of course can't be certain yeah. about whether you're improving or not. Yeah. So, but it opens up opens up a lot of questions. Like, yeah. um, so. We say that, so but now we're saying we're going to measure off this year of training with um, Cape CrossFit or whoever yes. uh, off just five workouts, um, and you can oh, you can make a big conversation about it. Like, is is five enough? Mm. And the type of things that uh, Castro puts in it, you know, yeah. do we not just look at uh, Chris doing benchmarks with us um, as an alternative? Every, as an alternative, we, I mean, he does do test week or something. Mm. It's a horrible week, but yeah. Uh, yeah. we do test week, and then that's also another way. That we could just do it. I mean, do we need the open? Sure. But uh, uh, I mean, it does. I I agree with it though. It it makes such a buzz. Mm. It's stressful if you're trying to make it to yeah, sure. some sort of competition or qualify. 
but uh, like this this last one uh, I had there was no reason for me to do it but mm-hmm. I did it um, I wasn't trying to qualify anything and it was fun yeah great it was time. fun having a little like leaderboard leaderboarding all the time and then you go in and obviously I go look at your scores yeah. and all the other big guys oh, oh you know I was just behind Justin I'm not that bad of course, right? And you go home and you feel like a weekend yeah. warrior. Yeah. I definitely would yeah. Courtney, so everything's fine. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think that's part of a bigger conversation that we can maybe have yeah. in the future, yeah. is to talk about the Open. But I think for now, it's coming up in a few weeks' time. Um, and I think it's definitely something that everyone should do, whether you're new or whether you're experienced, whether you're trying to make a <coughs> team or individual, or whether you're just doing for fun, like most of us. It's definitely something to do. So pay your money to yeah. Dave. <laughs> Not Dave, pay your money to Greg. To Greg, to Greg, to Greg Savan, and Dave. Does it go straight to Greg's uh, bank account? Yeah, well, the the technical um, uh, the, the technical CEO. <laughs> yes. The CEO. Every time what, someone what signs he? up, he gets a pop up notification. Yeah, the, bank, <laughs> yeah. the bank bank's fine, so <laughs> he just uh, it just goes straight to his pocket, and then he decides how much goes to Savan and Dave. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So he, he doles it out, but he gets SMSs like Justin says. His phone <laughs> is just just beeping all the time. Beep, 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 beep. He's, <laughs> actually, uh, he's actually he's actually looking at his phone right now, <laughs> wondering when Courtney Dave's going to uh, sign up. He's going to have to wait until yeah. payday. <laughs> <laughs> So, so there are 28 sanctionals this year, which is a lot. Um, it's basically one every two weeks, if they're 52 weeks in a year. Um, so there's plenty of ways to qualify. Lots of nice options, but also creates a lot of uh, variables. Some are easier, some are harder. Yes. Yeah. Listen, I think from a South African context, I've always said this, you know, the sanctionals now pose a different challenge uh, to that of maybe attending one regional in your year yeah. and that is how much money do you have in your bank account because yes, like you said. Uh, those athletes that have money to burn yeah. will potentially be able to attend more qualifiers or more sanctional so to speak yeah um so that's the the the, the rich get richer and the poor get poorer <laughs> yes 100 <laughs> percent basic capitalistic yeah. yeah world we live in yeah, yeah. so these acts of the cash they get to go around and they uh yeah qualifying but I mean, uh, if you go there five, to five of them, yes. I mean, your chances must be high. If, if you are making the top 10, at some point, like Moran's situation, there's going to be a few people that go through that have uh, yeah. pretty pretty low uh, results. Well, you could be really unlucky like Lucas Parker. Who <laughs> must have done, it all. He must have done 10 sanctionals. Yeah, or and Danny Spiegel. Didn't she do <laughs> almost all of them? Really? I, I, listen, this is one of those facts we were talking about earlier. <laughs> <laughs> you might need to Google that. But as far as I know, Danny Spiegel did many, many sanctionals. <laughs> she did 15. <laughs> even, even though there were only 14 sanctionals, she did 15 of them. <laughs> yeah. yeah, she made it. So yeah. well done to her. Well, just to, just, to, um, just to repeat again, for those who don't know, the way the spots are awarded is that national champions get first spot uh, then it goes to the top 20 uh, in the open and then sanctionals invites are in third so that's for individuals remember there's no teams qualifying through being national champions there's no teams qualifying through the open uh, you only qualify a team through going to a sanctional and there was a bit of a change on that as well in that this year they've decided that if you're on a team and you qualify say I'm on a team I qualify at fittest in Cape Town mm-hmm. Then I decide to join another team and go to uh, a different sanctional later in the year. My team is then ineligible to qualify at that sanctional. So you can only be on one team, basically. So, so that fucks it for three people. So no one can fill into that first team, the Fittest and Cape Town team. Um, they, they can, if they qualified already, they can do another sanctional, but they can't qualify again. Once you've qualified, you've qualified. So basically they're taking those four bodies is what made it... There's no one can fill into the space. Yes, you, can't, you can't take one athlete out, put yeah. them in another team. No, you can't. So you can't and just reserve fill another spot. Because weren't yes. they doing that? They, they figured out a little loophole this year. Yeah, so I think last year you could maybe, uh, I don't know if it happened or not, but if you had enough money, you could say to someone like Matt Fraser, look, uh, Matt, I'll pay you 20 grand if you help my team qualify. Yeah. And Matt could go through the whole year being on different teams, helping lots of teams qualify because he's that good. And they're never being present yes. at the games. Yes, so you can't do that anymore. Okay. Yeah. So that's at least something. Well, Sam Briggs qualified as an individual yes. and then went on to JST yes. in Reykjavik. Uh, they called her up because they had an injury and they competed and they did very well. Yeah. And they won a ticket. Yeah. But Sam Briggs was never in that team Yeah. No. going forward. So, yeah, that is that was definitely a great area I think they had to eliminate. Yeah. Um, fantastic that she was able to help yeah. them. But yes. I guess that's... Uh, a little bit unfair to some degree. Yes. Yeah. So they're trying to get rid of that. So they, they, the guys at HQ were sitting 
watching the whole year go down and they were like fucking just writing notes on their little windows uh, text yes and they're like okay well, we're gonna notes. remove this okay this one's not working oh fuck sam just went to that team what the fuck do we do now yeah um so it looks like they're clearing up all these uh all these little gray areas yeah so the other thing about national champions before i forget is that <coughs> the backfilling of national champions can now happen only if the national champion chooses to be on a team which makes it to the games Ah, yes. So say Justin wins the national championship of South Africa. Well, do, and he, do the Mike, uh, do the Mike. Mike Swatland. Swatland that we train mm. with. Yeah. So say Mike wins the national champion of uh, Botswana, um, and he decides that he wants that he goes on a team and he wins fittest in Cape Town, and he decides no, I don't want to be a national champion. I want to be a team competitor. Then they can backfill national champions to number two, whereas yes. previously this wasn't allowed. Yes. Once the national champion declined their spot. Uh, the spot was gone for everybody else in the country. That's an interesting rule. I mean, if you think about it, like I, I'm curious to know as, as to why they never foresaw that in the first place. I mean, yes. surely, yeah. surely, if it's if it's a competition that uh, at which you want uh, world representation from each national body, to suggest that you know there's going to be someone uh, representing each country uh, in the beginning of the season, and then when you get to the games as a spectator, you're like. Oh, but Afghanistan's missing, and yes, Russia's yeah, not yeah. here, and uh, Mauritius never made it. Yeah. yeah, maybe they were hoping like, they don't want so many numbers this year, <laughs> so they're hoping nationally we'll just lose a few people. So we logistically we can we're going to have only a few, so we don't have to worry about so much equipment and yeah. such chaos. But the interesting thing, <laughs> possibly yes, last year was that let's take Mike again as an example. He won the national championship of Botswana. But he didn't film his videos. He's not a competitive athlete. He just goes to gym. He does a class like the rest of us. Yes. But because he didn't film his videos, they emailed him and they said, can you please send us our, your videos? He said, I don't have videos. So they said, okay, you're disqualified. So this is now in, in last year's Open. He got disqualified and his spot was given to the second yeah. athlete in Botswana. So there was still yeah. a backfilling in some way. But he gets a stamp on his head saying he's disqualified. Yes, yeah, yeah. so it's a bit strange. So yeah. he, he, he wasn't trying to be funny. He's just, I'm just doing the Open, guys. I'm not filming yeah, my videos. I'm not paying that money to go up there. Just a normal guy. Yeah. And now I don't have a result on the 2019 Open, which is a bit funny. But everyone else in Botswana was yeah. thinking, how disrespectful of you, Mike. Yeah. <laughs> <Yes>. Possibly. <laughs> How dare you? Yeah. Well, then, then uh, even more normal guy went up to the games. Yeah, more normal guy. So, <laughs> congrats. Um, yeah, well done. Congrats. Well done. That was good. He's a... Katlejo. Katlejo. Katlejo, friend of the show. Uh, he had a good time. <laughs> I, I saw him at the opening ceremony. He looked like he was... Oh, he's having a door. Yeah, he was having a great time. Loving life. Oh, it's good. Good for, good for, well done, Katlejo. Um, so the next thing is the change in what constitutes a major and a minor penalty. Remember last time they had, I think, four or less reps. There's a minor penalty and then five or more, you get a major penalty. So now they've reserved the right to assess each movement individually. So if you miss five double unders in a workout that has 1,000 double unders, you shouldn't get a major penalty for that. That's just ridiculous. Yeah. But if you miss five ring muscle ups out of 10 ring muscle ups, that's obviously you've missed yes. a lot of stuff there. I like that. So they, they can assess it yeah. uh, individually, which is a good thing. Things, are ha things happen, people are people. Yeah. Um, yeah, especially for things like double unders. I mean, we've all missed yes, double exactly. unders. Yeah. I mean, it's just ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then the the last thing, oh, the second last thing I have is about um, the drug sanctions. So they've now made it explicit that they will announce all drug sanctions, whereas before they said they could do it at it, at their discretion. That's also cool. I I want to I want to I want to see their names. I want to know who it was. Yeah. So hang on. So, so 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 does this mean that if an athlete has uh, the metabolite of five different drugs in their system that they will announce all five rather than just one no, if no, they no, choose. No. Uh, I think what it means is that before, say someone popped for drugs, HQ could choose to announce it or not. Mm. So they could say, look, this guy or girl is so high profile, we're going to tell them, look, you've been popped, please don't come back. And this person could just go into retirement, say, guys, I've had enough of CrossFit. I want to become a, a, a banker and not have their name tarnished. So who's, we, be, who's we become a banker? Oh, who's become a banker? <laughs> we'll check. Yeah? Has anyone become a banker? I'll check on Instagram. <laughs> we, and then, we have no idea that there's some people that they could have just not mm, said. They just never told us about. But then also, is this, are they also saying that uh, they will pop them immediately without letting them do their, um, their little process? The, the, the B sample. Uh, the pea sample the, the bee sample not the bee sample it's all a <laughs> pea sample <laughs> it's, all a, it's all a pea sample it is all a pea sample <laughs> yes. um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, what's it called uh, dispute uh, yeah well or you just 
I think they announce it. They can announce it before they test the they beast. They announce it inside. Okay, yeah. So they'll say it before now. They say, look, look, this person's been popped. But they, I suppose they were doing that, weren't they? Yes, but we don't know if they were doing it for everybody. Okay. So now they, they've they said that we will do it. For, look, I'm not saying they didn't announce people in the past. I'm sure they did announce everybody. But people were complaining and saying yes. because the rule is vague, they yeah. might not be. But now they've said, look, we definitely will be telling everybody. Well, it, it looks like... It looks like HQ is listening. Yes. Because these are the things coming through. Everyone's like, yeah. why the fuck are you guys giving away a gun at the end of a competition? Yes. And they were just silent. They're not replying to yeah. it. Yes. And it looks like things like this. So people are complaining and they're replying to it. Oh, we have. And yeah. it's all just coincidence. Listen, I'm sure they have many discussions about <laughs> things that come up in the community. And probably only... Just the three of them at their desk. Yes, yes. the big desk. There's, there's probably only a few <laughs> topics that, that come to the fore that they actually address. Um... But you know what I always found interesting was if you've been following what some of the athletes are saying is that with regards to the, the drug d- testing policy of the past is that HQ had a list of all the athletes um, that um, they could test at any given time. Yeah, yes. they go into the pool. And as mm. a result, uh, athletes had to disclose their whereabouts. Yes. Um, and many athletes were upset about this, yes. that, that they uh, had to disclose their location um, and they're like, what, we will be there in six hours or something? Throughout the year, you know? But that's pretty standard, though, in sports. It is pretty standard. Which So so I th- it's it's interesting that I can understand athletes want privacy, but surely surely the ones that are getting most upset about it probably have <laughs> something to hide, right? Yes, Because yes. I know in weightlifting and in, uh, in other top sports, uh, Olympic sports particularly, you have to disclose where you are all the time. And the drug testers can show up at your door um, maybe they have to give you an hour notice or something so you can get out the shower. But uh, they show up and if you're not there, they say, where are you? And if you're not just down at the shops, if you're out of the country, mm. that's a big problem. I think uh, Ryan Fisher failed his uh, drug test. So he's forever tainted that he failed it, but it's because he didn't pitch. Mm. Oh, he I didn't think it was Ryan Fish. But uh, t- to top that, I think he oh, he was the guy that uh, shouted at the judge. Yes, uh, he told I remember him he'll that. fucking kill him. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So was that, so an, that was just made things worse for him or? when he was shouting? He had right rage. I just that rage was before the <laughs> testing thing. I'm not. I'm not sure. This the this is a semi qualified fact. Oh, he had right rage. Put um, that out there. Yeah. So Sem- semi fact. And uh, um, the last thing we need to talk about um, quickly is Justin's laughing at these semi facts <laughs> that I'm saying. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just imagining Ryan Fisher listening to this and getting <laughs> even more angry. <laughs> Fast comment. Uh, we've yeah. received about two comments on our three posts so far. So okay. our engagement rates really low. We've got a hundred listeners so far. Uh, a little bit more. Uh, really? It's uh, like 120. Thanks. Okay. Thanks uh, to you guys. Uh, <laughs> yes. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Thank you, listeners. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Now, how many a word, those, a how word many from our sponsors. <laughs> oh, there's then, none. No sponsors. <laughs> <laughs> how, many, how many of those hundreds are you just putting this podcast on repeat at work? <laughs> yes, I'm just clicking and I send it to my colleagues and they're like, guys, I don't listen to CrossFit stuff. <laughs> like a lot of people know that I, I have, uh, I've been, we've been doing this. And yes. uh, I always said to them, look, you're not going to enjoy it. Don't but, listen to it. Has your wife it's, listened? It's not, uh, my wife has not listened. My wife hasn't she, listened either. She keeps saying she will. Uh, Justin, what did your uh, girlfriend say? Did she listen? She said that she doesn't have time for this. <laughs> <laughs> so we have very supportive family. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, guys. So guys, we really re- relied on you on this yes. one. Yes. Our, our family, they're useless. <laughs> oh, the, yeah. uh, the last thing, the last thing uh, is, before we move off this topic, is that uh, after every week of the Open, the top 40 athletes have to submit their videos immediately. Um, it's not like before where they waited until the end and then they asked people to submit 19.3 18.5 mm. so i think that's fantastic yeah, yeah. that's so, cool. Uh, there's no more making up things so the last three points were really cool ones last yeah. three changes i enjoyed the last them. three changes i, I enjoyed it um hang on on that note uh, did you see that uh, wadproof app released um a timestamp yes i think that's also pretty cool and, so, and i never thought about it but apparently i mean i guess some athletes were filming some videos yes in retrospect yes and they're making it seem like they were done basically it's out, out of time or out a of different time. day yeah. so like day let's say 19.1 uh is in the first week of february yeah. february yeah but uh joe soap hmm. performs 19.1 <clears throat> in the fifth week yes and claims that it was done in yes. the first week yes, yes. okay Yes, um, that's 
that's cool. So I'm, I'm guessing it's just it's embedded in the phone, and the phone has to be connected to the internet, and it'll get a true little stamp, time stamp in it. Yes, um, it gets a little blue picture. Yeah, there's no way of kind of around it. So I think that's going to be cool for the sanctionals. I know some sanctionals, including Fittest of Cape Town, uh, have signed up with Wordproof so that their qualifiers will probably have to use this app. This is unofficial. I just saw it on Instagram. Mm. Uh, so they'll probably have to use this app and you'll get your blue sticker and it mm. shows that you've done the qualifier yeah. when you were supposed to. You didn't make it up yeah. afterwards. So Fitzis last, this this year last, is, um, they they weren't pushing it, but they were saying, friend of the, the competition, yes. we recommend using it. Recommend it, yeah. yeah. So maybe they got, everyone's getting a little... Listen, what proof's done a great job over the past like year or two to make yeah. the app user-friendly. I, I, I personally feel like it's at a point now where um, if you go about it any other way, like let's say just using your standard camera and then editing in comments or notes or yeah, yeah. Um, emailing it to a link to a friend, it's it becomes cumbersome. Yes. Uh, whereas the app is, is user friendly, you can all the information you possibly need is on mm. is time stamped on the video, and then you can share it or upload it pretty seamlessly. Yes. Um, I think what's more of a hindrance for a lot of people is maybe a slow internet connection. Uh, yes. Um, Uploading. So if you're going ADSL. Copper line. You better you, you better actually do the workout a week early. Yes. You can't use that that uh, <laughs> What's in trouble? That two meg line that I have at home. You still um, got a dial up. Yeah, a dial up one goes <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I remember those days. Um, yeah. Uh, cool, we're gonna move on. That takes us m- nicely into weightlifting. Yeah, it doesn't take us nicely at all. But before, we're well, well, something. I got us a, a good segue. Well, oh, a good way to. Firstly, uh, the bodybuilder man that died. I recognize his face. I don't know him. And uh, he sent Franco. It to me. Franco. Yeah, Franco. Uh, what's his friend? Franco Colombo. So oh. when I googled him after you sent it, then I was like, oh, I've seen this guy yes. and I know this guy. Uh, I used to like that guy. He was really cool. Yes. We watched Pumping Iron back in the day. Yes, that was the best. You haven't watched Pumping Iron. Uh, I don't think I have. Yeah, you watch geez, that's terrible. Someone told me we don't do biceps in, in, uh, in CrossFit, <laughs> I so biceps I didn't watch it. The, I don't, at, at some point in my little mini training career, I was watching all that kind of stuff and looking yeah. at bodybuilding, and I was reading Testosterone Nation uh, blogs. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. <laughs> and I think it was that point when I was like, ah, oh, pumping iron. Um, and uh, I always remember the, the piece that was used is uh, Arnie smoking a joint. Yes, yeah. <laughs> You good. like that part, right? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm smoking thing. one right now. Smoking a joint. <laughs> Jeez, all my favorite things. Oh, it's a great movie. <laughs> but did you guys, listen, this could be a semi-factual statement right now, but I read on the morning chalk up, I think it was yesterday, that Charles Pendlet. Uh, uh, Glenn Pendlet. Glenn, Glenn Pendlet. Charles, his brother. Charles, Charles is alive. Sorry. Charles Poliquin. Charles. Glenn Pendlet. Yes. Yes, you're right. Died as well. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was going to go into. That's both now, of those people yeah. died. Yeah. Both those guys died. Charles Poliquin died a few months ago. What were they yeah. training together? No, 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 no. It's unrelated. <laughs> Charles Poliquin died a few months ago. Um, he was a like a, a more of a bodybuilding kind of. Guy. I don't know this guy. Yeah. And uh, Glenn Pendlet was a weightlifting guy, weightlifting yes. coach. So he, he developed the Pendlet row. Yes. Pendlet row. Yes. Yes. That was. A good way to move into our subject today of weightlifting because yes. lots of weightlifters do the pen lay row yes because of pen lay what, so, is, what I, is the pen lay row <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like a bent over row <laughs> yes and, and, <laughs> it took years and how's, no, 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 how, how's the pen lay row different to I have a no, regular I, I have no bent idea. over row uh, I have no idea <laughs> we don't know anything about weightlifting <laughs> <laughs> but that is our topic today. Yeah, amazing. Savvy professional yeah. conversations yeah. on weightlifting. Uh, uh, yeah, so rest in peace to those guys. Yeah. Uh, we need to find a video of the Pendlet Row. We'll link I'm, it in I'm, there. I'm pretty convinced the Pendlet Row is there to strengthen your, 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 back, your back when yeah. pulling from the ground, but it also teaches you to pull your knees out of the way. Um, so that the bar path is more. Oh, are you making a Check it out. Check it out. He's just made that up. Look, it sounds good <laughs> enough. So no, if, if you think about a standard bent over row, you already have your knees pretty much set and have knees. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. And you pull the bar directly yes. up. Whereas yeah. the pendlet row gets your ass lower down on the ground. Is that the difference? And as you pull from the ground, you pull the knees out the way and yeah. you make contact. Okay. Did, did the clock off tell you this? Uh, <laughs> yoga man told me this. Yoga man. <laughs> back, okay. in the da- back in the day when I did personal <laughs> training with yoga man, he made me do pendlet rows. Oh, really? That's it. And yoga all I heard Chris. was, pull your knees back. Pull your knees back. Pull your knees back. <laughs> pull your knees back. So you watched that video. The yeah. pen lay video. Yeah, so it all just got spread around. And then yeah. somehow, it, a, a little piece I read about him, it says... Uh, it said something something about it beca- becoming so popular that it, it, they gave the name yeah. Pendlet Row to him. Like the Sots um, Press. So it's not like he said, like, hey guys, I designed this. No. Mm. Yeah. Just like the Sots Press. Apparently that guy, Victor Sots, 
he was just really good at, at doing that kind of press. Mm. And then I think some Americans saw him and they decided that this is going to be the SOTS press. That's pretty cool. And now we do ridiculous things like a five rep max <laughs> SOTS press. press. That's <laughs> right. another, yeah. another common misconception, I think I'm correct, yeah. is uh, the SOTS press is not from the back. No. The original SOTS press is from the front. 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 Yes. Then if it's a back squat, if it's from the back, you have to say snatch grip. Well, you don't have to it's say it's behind the neck. Behind press. the neck. Yes. Press. Just yeah. out of respect. Same thing as how everyone still says uh, squat clean or clean. A clean is a clean. clean that is clean. squat clean. Mm. Yeah. Um, True. But it's become yeah. it's 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 uh, everything kind of transformed. But think about time. this. Think about any amateur lifter that pulls from the ground and hits their knees all the time. Yeah. yeah. And like knees are bleeding or bar path is fucked up because they just don't know how to get the knees out of the way. Yeah. What do you make them do? Pen Lero. Pen Lero. Get oh, yeah. knees out the fucking way. This now, so guys. Just remember that, guys. Do it. Do it. Send us your videos. <laughs> Okay, uh, so uh, we got to move on because we're running out of time. I hope Schiff's listening to this because uh, he needs Schiff. to do some pain there, right? <laughs> Oh, we didn't shout out Matt Schiff. Oh, yes. Our, our friend of the show. To his podcast. Yeah. Matt Schiff, his podcast name is? Outcome. Outcome Podcast. Outcome Podcast. Find it everywhere that good podcasts are sold. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> Just Google it. Just Google it. Because we don't know where it is. Yeah. Well, it's every- we're also everywhere. I we didn't even talk about that. Yeah, we'll do it on the outro. Outro. Okay. Yeah. I, I had my, sorry about the intro. That's how. What do you guys think of the intro? It was great. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. You, forgot, I, you forgot half I the forgot intro. I forgot the intro. <laughs> I practiced it for the week and then I said it and it was just a bits and pieces. Yeah, guys. But, uh, w- welcome. Yeah, bye. Bye. Uh, bye. Uh, bye. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I'll, it'll be better next week because I'll <laughs> practice the whole week in the car and then I'll choke <laughs> as soon as we arrive again. Yes. Okay. Um, so we're going to talk about weightlifting. Yeah, weightlifting. So we thought it would be good to talk about it because we actually have a little bit of experience, in particular, Western Province weightlifting. Cape Town, South Africa. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so we met in, or oh, me and... Yeah, a bit of history to start us off. Do you yeah. want to do it? Well, uh, me and you met. And no, he I was there. Just, I met you and I met Matt. No, we can't see us. he was there too. You were there the same day? At the bog. But yes. Did we, did we meet you the same day? No, we didn't meet at the bog. No, I never we met, met you at the bog. HH. HH, yes, he but was there. The same HH, uh, just for our listeners, stands for Hot and Tots Holland. Yeah, yeah. which is but, the one. But there's big... more. There's there's a little bit more back to it. So, uh, <laughs> my weightlifting coach uh, uh, was Justin's uncle. He's still Justin's uncle. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't disowned him. Neville Swat. Neville Swat. I was wondering. Yeah. So he was my weightlifting coach back in the day, and I did a couple of weightlifting meets. And then uh, I was at one meet, and then he said his nephew is coming, and his nephew's friend, Matt, is coming, and mm. uh, Chelsea was there, I think. Yes. And I think that was it. Yeah. I, I remember the story uh, slightly differently in that Matthew and I had started training at the bog separate to you. Yes, yes and, and he was and talking about kept, you. And kept telling us about this really nice guy named Courtney. <laughs> yes, yes. He was a yes. great weightlifter. <laughs> no, he wasn't. And uh, <laughs> we said, oh, yeah, you know, Sure, well, yeah. maybe maybe we'll meet this guy this one day. Fucking guy, they're yeah. just talking about. Like, we just said lift. We actually didn't care about. <laughs> we don't yes. care about to be honest. Um, <laughs> and then eventually we bumped into you at, at uh, weightlifting meet. Yes. yes. So w- when we started, we started because we were doing fittest. Correct. And we, and cro- we were starting to do a bit of CrossFit, and we didn't know how to lift. Uh, we didn't know what we didn't know anything about weightlift, yeah. weightlifting. So it turns out that your uncle happened to be a, a so South, South African, African weightlifter. weightlifter, which you'd never mentioned since no. I knew you at that point. No. Oh. And then we just went, and then he talked about courts. And then when you're in that kind of community, the, the next step is to do uh, a meet. Yeah. A meetup is basically you go and you do a, a non-competitive. Uh, uh, weightlifting meet. competition, yeah. competition yeah. to establish your baseline numbers. Yeah, yeah. So um, we won't go into deep but the, in depth, but you you know you work out your numbers with the, um, your coach and you do a little bit of practice and then you arrive and um, there's quite there's there's quite a bit to it. But uh, when we arrive, uh, Neville went straight to the back, or was was it just me and you? Yeah. And Courtney was there. <laughs> Courtney was there. I was walking around. I was wearing a trench coat. I think at that time we were just so happy to meet someone that um, had a friendly face. Yes. yes. So the, we were the, foreigners the to the The biggest thing I remember about that day is Justin and I had no idea what was going on. Um, uh, when you get there, you know, there's certain things you got to do. There's certain clothing you have to wear when you lift. Um, they have certain rules. Yeah. And we didn't know that you wait in the back and they call you out. And we, we, we really had no idea. We had no idea that the, the timing between lifts or um, how long you have when you're on the floor. Yes, it was very so, stressful. Uh, Courtney, uh, we had no idea that flags went up or things like that. So Courtney was at the back telling us what to do, basically. Yes. He said, like, okay, you go out now. Um, okay, well, you just got that 85 snatch. 
Um, I recommend maybe 87. Don't do 93 now because it looked a bit shitty. Yeah, Justin, or, why or are you putting 100 kgs on the bar? Yes, Justin, uh, out hot Justin. Uh, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, Justin, Justin bomb swat. Yes. <laughs> Justin, you know that if you fail all three snatches, you uh, can't, can't clean and jerk. Uh, what? What are you talking about? In CrossFit, I can, I can keep going until I hit the lift. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh. Um, so that's that's kind of how we met. We lifted that day, and then uh, I don't know how we carried on talking. But then we, at some point, Courtney ended up doing CrossFit with us. Yes, we were because uh, Lana, his wife, he was very, he was a bit uh, resistant at first. Very, he was very, uh, he was quiet. Yes, so he still was still very resistant. I remember looking at Courtney's physique, thinking, "You better do some CrossFit." <laughs> 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 it's just chunky. And the funny thing is, me and you back then, we were way smaller. Yes. And we were squishy. Of course. Well, <laughs> well uh, just so the viewers know, back then we were actually um, very well versed in hypertrophy training. Yes. Um, specifically in the chesticles. Just chest. And <laughs> triceps <laughs> and quads. Jeez, I don't even remember being emphasis on squatting to depth back then. Like, I didn't... Yeah. It was just like, okay, cool, I'll do it. Like, I didn't think, oh, well, you know, my legs are going to... I've got to get bigger legs. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, it was just... We, we, listen, yeah. we weren't even, we weren't, I don't even think we were aware of where we were deficient. We just thought we were strong. We yeah. were like, within our little small functional fitness community, yeah. we were the fittest people we knew. And uh, when we got to the weightlifting meet, we realized there was a bigger world yeah. out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, exactly. And that's there when was, we started figuring out about CrossFit. Yeah, and yeah. I mean, we, I couldn't believe uh, our second meet or something, Lyle, uh, Lyle, what's his name? Deploy. Lyle Deploy, yeah. He powered 130 kilos. I, was like, I couldn't oh, believe oh it. Oh my God. How do you do that? Yeah. I, think, I think he even did it in school shoes. So. Yes, <laughs> they were wearing school shoes. Yes. Hey? yes. yes. That's it, funny. Whenever I saw the lift, I just thought of the jingle. Meets. Back to school. <laughs> Back to reality. It's so quite funny. That's, that's quick history. Do you guys want to say anything about oh, that? The school shoe story makes me laugh. Because back in the day, like weightlifting is not a... It's not, it's not cricket and rugby. It's, there's, no money. there's no money in these things. The guys who do it, they're, they're not rich. So they found out this guy, uh, he's a cobbler, basically, he makes shoes. So he can take any old cheap shoes and he can put a heel on it. Because in weightlifting, you probably know, because you're listening to a fitness podcast, that you have shoes with high heels on them, like uh, wedges, basically. So this guy could take school shoes and put wedges on the back of them. So all these kids were lifting in what looks like school shoes. So So it wasn't... (laughs) <laughs> school shoes. It was school yeah. shoes, but with a heel on it. <laughs> okay, okay. Did they put the heel on? Yes. So, uh, I just thought they were school shoes with a little bit of a heel. Yeah. Yeah. He just puts it. I mean, they made one on. hell of a sound on the platform. I thought yes. to myself, ah, those must be really old. Back then, the louder the sound, the better you were. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Stomping cockroaches <laughs> all day, it, man. <laughs> and then a donkey kick it. Uh, yeah. So should we should we talk about what weightlifting is and how to qualify and that sort of thing? Yeah. So everything we're talking about now is our experience in in Western Province. So. Uh, uh, a lot of the rules might have changed or the way the flow goes i'm not sure yeah um oh, courtney well. knows the most courtney will have you know is uh i don't know if you get a, a qualification for it but you're one of western province uh referees yeah um so i don't know i did the refereeing stuff and i did my certain number of hours uh, refereeing um weightlifting competitions and then you become a local referee and you become a regional referee and then a national referee so you just have to do a certain number of hours and show that you know what's going on. So what are you? Uh, national. National. Okay. National referee. There we you go. Wave your flag. Where's your times. Where's your credentials? Your, uh, I didn't where's get your a piece of paper? There's nothing. There's no organization. <laughs> <laughs> so he's not really. You didn't even get a badge. No, I just got a, a WhatsApp. You got a thumbs up. Okay. I got a WhatsApp. What's so that? you've made it. Well done. Thank you. <laughs> so you, you wave your flag enough times. And I've waved my flag at lots of events. I even waved my flag at Phyllis in Cape Town a few times. Yes, yes you have. Got shouted at. But, I always uh, thought uh, being a judge was quite simple. You basically waited for the judge on your left and right to put the flag up first. Agree. And then you agree. <laughs> yes, you <laughs> just agree. Or oh, disagree. <laughs> <I> disagree. <laughs> There's so many things oh, we could talk about like like that. We had no idea that... I mean, I mean name three things that you can't do in a lift. Uh, you can't press out mm-hmm. uh, your snatch. Um, what else can't you do? Um, you can't press out your jerk. You can't press out your jerk. You can't drop the bar before the you get the light or Jeez, the dial signal. That was a big one. Hey? Mm-hmm. Yes. Wait for the judge to say, yeah. "Down!" And cross for this chuck it. Yeah, and you just chuck it. You're supposed to wait till it comes past your shoulders before you let go of it. Yeah. Like give, it a, give it a second of stillness and then wait for the dude in the middle to say yes. Matt, say I don't yes. know if you remember, but I remember the first couple of competitions being really frustrated when one out of the three judges gave me like. Yes, a red flag, and you're like, or why, even why, two for that why, matter. Why, why? I would stand there and be like, 
are you are you for real? Like, <laughs> did you even watch what I just did? <laughs> and then walking out being angry, and and I think like that's obviously immaturity when it comes to yeah. to, to to having weightlifting experience and the whole like understanding what goes on. But like now, of course, if someone tells you listen, it's a no lift, you kind of respect the fact that they're a that's national the level rules. referee, yeah. and that's the rules, you know. Yeah. Um, another yeah. another one was uh, you can't stop pulling from yes. above the knee. Yeah, so once the, once the bar goes past your knee, that the lift has technically started. So you can't pause, you can't pull a little bit and then, uh, and then stop and, um, and then do like a little hang clean or something like that. Yeah. You're not so allowed to do that. It's gotta be a smooth movement smooth, from the knees upwards. Continuous movement. Yeah, and then other things like things you can't like do Like we a, had no idea about that. I think a lot of people don't know things like that. The double clean, people still double clean. Like where you catch hitch. it, or you, you catch it low on your chest and then sort of just push it up a little bit to, uh, to your neck. So you yeah, can't I think for like CrossFit is coming into weightlifting, that's, uh, quite a prevalent yeah. thing happening because of poor front rack yeah. mobility. Yeah. yeah. So uh, like if you were planning to be a super crossfitter or are planning to be a crossfitter, um, going through uh, a couple of meets and following the rules, it's, it's really beneficial. Uh, it makes you move nice and smoothly. Um, obviously the, the better you move, the less chance of any fuck ups. Yes. And I think that was a big motivator for us initially was yeah. to become better lifters yeah. through weightlifting for CrossFit. Yeah. And now in retrospect i think we look back and we we realize that we've definitely learned enough through that weightlifting experience to to move virtuously mm. um without necessarily feeling obliged to always go to the competitions yeah look i think a couple of years ago when we used to watch the games um we used to see crossfitters competing at the games with really terrible weightlifting technique and you don't see that anymore no one has right. bad technique anymore mm -hmm. you can't get away with it you see some some guys who are trying to be competitive with bad technique and they just get eaten up. It, you, you need a good base. I'm not yeah. saying that you need to do weightlifting with a weightlifting coach to get a good base. Crossfitting, co crossfit coaches are really good at weightlifting nowadays. Oh, they got better, yeah. Yeah, but um, it's, it's, it's still beneficial, I think, to do weightlifting, yeah. even just for that composure. And when you do a weightlifting meet, it's you standing there on the stage. It's just you, three judges, and a whole crowd. Everyone's looking at you and you gotta be composed. Yeah. And I think that's something that uh, can really help you if you're trying to do CrossFit competitively, uh, to not be afraid. Because when you're doing CrossFit, you're in front of everybody. Everybody's looking yeah. at you. So Stadiums of people. You Stadiums. learn a lot from just six lifts yeah. out, out of eight hours. Mm. Out of eight hours. <laughs> I think, yeah, I mean, on that note, we, we, we spoke about it earlier, but I think, I think that is where weightlifting in general is going wrong. It's that it's a tedious process. Mm. Yes. It's, it really does take a lot of time. And if you're an avid weightlifter and you're listening to this, you will probably be taking offense right now. But for a CrossFitter coming into that environment, it really, it really does not leave a lasting impression, you know, with the athlete, you know, in that it physically takes your entire day. Yes. Yeah. So just to That's elaborate a bit. So okay. So we should should we move on to the basically how how would you qualify and how a meet goes in Western Province back then at least? Yeah. So look. There are different weightlifting clubs around in, in Western Cape and they're extremely hard to find. There's not much social media, um, there's not much, um, there's not much uh, website stuff. They're basically, if you know someone, you can do a meet. So luckily you know us, so you can send us a DM and we'll let you know. But there's some clubs, you sign up uh, to the club, um, you let the, the coach know that you want to come and train and you do some training and then you come to a meet and there's probably a meet every month. It's held at one of the weightlifting clubs. Uh, you show up there, usually how it happens is you show up in the morning, uh, you weigh in. So you come there, you weigh in in front of a judge. Um, uh, they check your weight, they put you into a body weight category. And let's say for example, the weigh in is from eight to nine. So you've got to show up there between eight and nine and you weigh in and then from nine to 10 is a rest time where you can go and eat your sandwiches and drink some water. And then from 10, you start lifting. And it probably takes uh, two to three hours to get through your lifts with everybody in your, in your heat. So it takes a long time. The problem is um, that when you, um, when you weigh in, you could weigh in at eight o'clock but because only one heat can run at a time, you might only be lifting at 12 o'clock. You might be lifting at one o'clock or two o'clock. There's been plenty of times where we've come there at eight o'clock and we end up lifting at like two, three o'clock in the afternoon. And like Justin says, that's not ideal and it's pretty boring and uh, not everybody has the stomach for that. 
it's uh, it's difficult. I mean, the funny the funny thing is, CrossFit has really put a lot of speed on the sport in that sense. In yeah. that, like, you could rock up for a Saturday um, session at your box, and within one hour, establish your one rep max clean and jerk and one RM snatch. Yeah. It, it, it doesn't need to take eight hours. Yes. And I think, like I was having a think about it last night. If you look at what cricket has done to sort of uh, reignite interest in the sport, they yeah. have, they, they have um, shortened down like the one day game to, what is it? 20 overs. 20 overs. Oh. And um, th- I mean, people go nuts for that. They come in for one day, or one afternoon, they watch the guys go head to head and they go home. Yeah. And I think weightlifting needs to kind of like re-engineer uh, the way in which they, they, they promote the sport. Yes, because there, there are a lot of crossfitters. Crossfitters are really strong and they have decent technique um, and they could we could have decent weightlifters. We could find some decent weightlifters to represent us internationally. Uh, we've got some top lifters in South Africa. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> Sorry, I'm back. At the moment, the girls are doing better than the guys. Uh, we've got Mona, Mona Pretorius, who's been around for a long time. Yes. And, and uh, she represents us internationally. She'll be at World Champs yes. in a few weeks. And then we've got Johanny Taliad. Mm-hmm. Uh, who was big into CrossFit, but yeah. uh, obviously made a, a career change not so long ago. Yeah, to weightlifting. She went to four regionals, I think, Johanny. Mm-hmm. So she was really good. And and, uh, and she also li- lifted at African Champs. Um, she finished second at African Champs this year, I think. Um yeah, she finished second at African Champs in, in April this year. Uh, Mona finished fifth at African Champs in April this year. Um, and then there was African Games last month where Mona was also, and she also did really well there as well. African Games are sort of smaller than African Champs, but it's, uh, it's, it's multi-sport, whereas African Champs is just weightlifting. It's weightlifting championships. So we've got, some, we've got some, some good weightlifters, but I think we're hampered a bit by lack of organization. Yeah, organization definitely. and budget budget yeah um, who was it I, I was chatting to um matthew holiday uh, over the weekend at the battle of the beasts yeah and he was just commenting on how uh it, it was disappointing now and then to hear that you've qualified for x and y competition and then it's going to cost you fifty thousand rand to get there yeah yeah and listen it's no different in crossfit right now yeah. you have yes. to pay a hefty amount of money but i think if you weigh up the experience of a weightlifting comp and a crossfit competition, uh, you might find yourself getting less yes. value for money yeah. in the weightlifting side of things. I was thinking about that too. Like we have top crossfitters who are crossfit coaches. Uh, some of them are gym owners, and they pay their way along with some uh, fundraising to these big sanctional events around the world. And they used to go to regionals. They used to go to the games. But we have weightlifters who don't seem to want to be coaches in gyms. And they don't seem to have the the fundraising backing to make it to these these yeah. big weightlifting competitions. They're very, is- they're very isolated. Yeah, it's not big in China. I mean, let's exciting. think. Let's think about this. Imagine we uh, were hugely passionate about only weightlifting. We stuck around at the bog, which is in Budapest, on mm. a lonely field, mm. on a school premises. What it's about like ten by ten meters mm. in size, and there's no members. Yeah, it's yeah. just Mr. It's- Neville Swart <laughs> coaching. Yeah, the bog is a Budapest Olympic gym. Yeah, that's it's a garage. where we started in a yes. tiny garage, no lights, nothing. It was just a square piece of concrete. You're not going to make it very far with the community fundraising efforts there. Yeah, unfortunately. Uh, yeah, yeah. So you think there's uh, from what we're saying, it seems like there's two things missing. The the weightlifting meets are not exciting. They yeah. take a long time. Um, it's not conducive to people coming in and and doing something fun for two or three hours yeah. like a CrossFit competition. Um, well, CrossFit competition takes longer, but it's, it's it's more exciting. That's the thing. It's exciting, and obviously, and there's no community. It, it's colorful, basically. Yeah, there's no <laughs> there's community, no community be- because of that, basically, because yeah. it's not uh, it's not exciting for us. The 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 day will always be long, but they can definitely cut it. Yes, yeah. shorter these guys. Of course, I think the. Um, but then again, it comes to money and and um, uh, having come, people come in and really uh, streamline and line it and make it efficient. Well, I was and they say, need money and they need uh, equipment and stuff. But so how, you know. so let's let's play um, devil's advocate. We put our positive hats on, yeah. and the three of us said, right, next it's Saturday, impossible. next Saturday, we're going to run the first revamped weightlifting competition yes. ourselves. How does it go? Okay. I, I think because it's amateur competition, 
these guys are not trying to go to world championships. Mm-hmm. We put less emphasis on the procedures of weighing in for an hour, writing down these things, waiting another hour to rest, and then starting your lifts. Mm-hmm. You guys can come in there. Tell me how much you weigh. Which category do you want to be in? Uh, I, I weigh less than 75. Okay, cool. You go there, 75. We're going to start. You're going to do your three lifts. Do we even need to wait the minute between the lifts? Uh, do you we need to? Through. Do we need to have the fancy clock to say 30 seconds? You can change your lifts. So don't change yeah. your lifts, guys. You you tell me what you want to lift. You're going to lift it. You're not going to change it. Also, the the um, I mean, it's it's you could everything's digital now. You could do everything on an Excel sheet. Yeah, yeah. But most I think, of the time, a lot of times wasted on writing on a board. Yeah, uh, there's no projectors. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you could even have like two or three platforms going simultaneously. Yeah. Mm. Like you don't have to all yeah. be zoning in on one athlete. You could have the girls on the one side, the guys on the other side. Um, yeah. You could even add in like a CrossFit style lift, like yeah. a, a one rep max cluster. You know, if just yeah. for some interest each each weekend, yeah. let's say it was on a rotational basis, maybe once a month, you have a different, uh, what do you call it? Like um, um, special lift of the day. Yeah. You know, it could be an overhead squat, it yeah. could be could be anything yeah. all right just to add some spice and some flavor to something which could be seen as an aid to developing the sport yeah but maybe like you say not necessarily sending athletes to world champs through yes. a rigorous yeah. um formalized testing procedure and then yeah. if these things go well people eyes go on it and then they can then they can make the effort to go to a big proper yes meet, um and then they can push through Exactly. I think it might be an unpopular opinion among pure weightlifters, but I think we need to get rid of some of the procedure around weightlifting because it's just not necessary for a guy coming in there weighing 80 kilos, snatching 40 kilos. He doesn't need to change his lifts. He doesn't need to have a minute between his lifts and that sort of thing. He just needs to do weightlifting for fun, improve his technique. And then if suddenly he starts snatching 120 and he becomes a really good weightlifter, then he'll say, okay, I want to do this yeah. properly now. I'll go to some proper Yeah, man, he must just rock up on the platform and do 10 touch and go at 40 and then leave. <laughs> yeah, then leave. <laughs> yes, that's exactly yeah, what we're going to do. Yeah. Uh, we did run our own little line uh, here at Cape Cross. Chris let us, um, yeah. and we organized most of it. Yeah. Yes. And it did went pretty well. It um, did go pretty well. However, we did maintain the maintain the old system, the old system, the regular structures. Yes. You know, yeah, yeah. Um, which yeah, it ended up being long. But people, I mean, people, surprisingly, people still stayed around. Yes. So if if you add a tiny bit of excitement to it, yes. you would get double the people. Yes. You know, yes. And they would hang around. Yeah. Um, yeah. So there is weightlifting to be done in South Africa. Like there's some big numbers that we can look at. There's some standards if you wanna if you wanna qualify for things. Like if we if we maybe start with the men, how much do men weigh nowadays? What's the average man weigh, Justin? Uh, eighty nine. In CrossFit, I'd say, in, uh, 80, 80, I'd say eighty kilos. I would say between eighty five and ninety three. Between eighty five and ninety three. Big man. Uh, yeah. let's say let's say let's. But say on a, average, yeah. I think you need to be eighty eight to eighty nine kgs. Actually, the average on most people are really big, yeah. So let's take an eighty eighty nine kilo man, which is a which is one of the weight classes. So to qualify to go to the Commonwealth or the African Championships, um, you need to have a 266 kilo total. So let's say that you can uh, snatch 110 and clean and jerk 140, that makes a 250. So let's say uh, snatch 115 and clean and jerk 145. That's a that's mm. those are decent numbers yeah. if you wanna yes. if you wanna make it to Commonwealth as an average CrossFit man. 115, 145. That's for an 81 kg. Uh, 81 kg man. Yeah. yeah. So, 89 278 so let's say 280 so you need to snatch uh, about 120 and clean and jerk um, 160 one, 160 mm. yeah Th- those are big numbers that's decent numbers so, yeah. those are competitive numbers for crossfit yes maybe even a little bit low on the on the snatch side like, there's guys doing it but they just yeah. got to mm. pitch but so, please but the, like just so our listeners know this is for this is south african standard right yes yeah so, so if, if you can if you can do those numbers, let's say you can snatch one. Let's say you're an average CrossFit man, 89 kilos. Uh, you can snatch 125, and you can clean and jerk 155. You can you can potentially qualify to go to international weightlifting competitions. Yeah, so that's, that's not bad. I think that's achievable. It's pretty cool. If you want to get your name out there and stuff, yeah. That's, that's and if you cool if you like do. if you like chasing accolades, yeah. you know. Um, like, hey, I represented South Africa. I yeah. got a medal here. I stood on this podium there, yeah. and I got bored of it after a couple of months, and then went back to CrossFit. 
It's pretty cool. It's, it's cool. nice. I got I got a couple of medals at home. Western it's, um, Province. Yeah. I got the Western Province outfit. Yeah. Not that I'm the best weightlifter, but do you wear that to bras every now and then? Yeah, yeah. I must have done. Yeah. <laughs> yes. When it gets cold, yeah. <laughs> yeah. sleeping then too. Yeah. Um, what does a CrossFit girl weigh? Uh, six, a CrossFit girl? Yeah, sixty-four. Sixty between sixty <laughs> what and sixty-five. Sixty-five. Okay. Well, let's let's take the sixty-four kilo weight class. There's a sixty-four kilo weight class and a seventy-one yeah. kilo weight class. So for sixty-four, you need to have a one hundred and seventy-six kilo total to make it to international competition. So that's uh, snatching seventy-six and clean and jerking a hundred. Mm. I think that's very possible. Mm. Yeah, for uh, for a lot of these CrossFit girls. Definitely, Michelle must be hitting. I think I yeah, think yeah. I think the clean and jerk is probably uh, like going to be tougher for some of them. Not 100. tougher, but but I don't know if too many girls in South Africa that are clean and jerking a hundred. Yeah, uh, I mean Michelle Moran Michelle, can. Uh, I she think, posted yesterday. I think Lisa Clarence, like one eighty, one eighty is, is, is close. There, yeah, yeah. She can there. clean it. Mm. Yeah, she can probably I clean it. She can jerk it. Yeah, so it's just not impossible numbers. So yeah. look, if I'm you sure Dina Swift can Dina, mm. she could probably do it. Mm. Yeah. Probably a hundred. Celeste, when she comes back, she should probably she should probably get somewhere around those numbers. So yeah. it's it's not impossible. Um, yeah. Okay, I think that's all we've got on weightlifting. So yeah. if you want to join up weightlifting, send us a DM. <laughs> we can we can let you know about some clubs in the area. We know all the people personally. We've got their WhatsApp. Where are they going to DM us? DM us on Instagram. Instagram at No Rex Podcast. N O R E X Podcast. Podcast. <laughs> yes. You can email us too, no results media at gmail.com. No results media. That's a big company. It's a big, very big company. Yeah, it's got uh, lots of uh, Courtney, things. Justin, Matthew, Holdings. Um, <laughs> yes. Got lots holding of nothing. <laughs> 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 holding three episodes. But yeah, yeah thank you for listening. Uh, uh, find us uh, on Lipson. Uh, find us on mm. Apple Podcasts. Find us on uh, Stitcher. Find us on uh, Outcast. Deezer. Outcast. Out, out, yeah. Outcast and uh, Spotify. Spotify. Spotify and then a lot of the other little ones. I YouTube. think most most of the, the the little apps that can pick up all podcasts, we will find us on there. Find us everywhere, everywhere. Google, us. Google. Yeah. Um, Instagram. Other thing is uh, comments. Give us some topic ideas. You know, share our show, please. Yeah, uh, we really need the help. Um, Roll outro music. Outro music. Oh, Justin, you rushing out? I'm going. going. You got He's a meeting. Going. I got a meeting. Okay. I'm late already. I've got a meeting. Going? I'm going to eat calories. something. You going to eat? I'm also going to get eat. Uh, thank you for listening. Cheers. Roll it again. Cheers.